Thank you for joining us at Hope for today's message. We're a multicultural family church that's located in Varsity Lakes on the beautiful city of the Gold Coast. No matter what you're facing right now, where you're from, or what language you speak, we want to welcome you. We're a home away from home for people from all over the world in all walks of life. And our heart is to be the voice of hope in our community. A safe place for people to heal and experience their hope restored. We hope this message blesses you. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you that you are doing something in our lives each and every day. But we say today, Lord, as we open our hearts and our minds to receive from your word, Lord, transform us, renew our minds. Transform us more and more into the image of Christ, more and more as a reflection of your kingdom here on earth, we pray in Jesus' name. And all those that believe said, amen. Are you guys out there? Are you, are you all very hungry? You're, you're probably thinking about the family lunch that's straight after the service. Is that what you're thinking about? Is that right? Is that why I've already lost you? Or, or perhaps those coffee lovers. Who's the coffee lovers in the house? Come on, who's, who's with me? Coffee lovers in the house, unite. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see how we're a Pentecostal church. We wave our hands in the air and all the Pentecostal coffee lovers raised their hands and said, amen. Coffee is afterwards too. But I know I've got you just for a little bit of time. Amen. Thank you very much, Peter. And I want us to really unpack what it means to be the body of Christ, what it means to be the family, what it means to be the house of God. And here we are one expression of many, 250, by the way, churches on the Gold Coast. Did you know that? 250. That's a lot of churches, right? And they don't just gather on Sunday. They gather throughout the week, some of them. And some of them have multiple services on Sunday. And some of them even meet on Saturday. Would you believe it? Saturday. That's the day I sleep in. How do I do that? Now, God is actually on the move, not just here, but in those churches too. And Noriko and I have had a wonderful privilege of being able to connect with a lot of the church leaders across the Gold Coast through an organization called City Impact. They do Easter United and also other events through the year. And so that's been our wonderful journey to actually hear what God is actually stirring up in the hearts and minds right across the Gold Coast. And let me say that God is actually speaking very clearly in this season about unifying the church. Isn't that good? Unifying the church. A body of believers that come together. Now, we are a representation of that body. We are no longer foreigners and strangers, as it says in Ephesians 2, 19 to 21 but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of, do you see it there? God's family. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and say, you are family. And, and by the way, your neighbor is on the other side as well. So you can turn to the other person so they don't feel left out in this moment and say, you are family too. Go on. That's wonderful. Aren't they good-looking people? We have a very good-looking family here. It says, it goes on and says, together we are his house. It's unusual, isn't it? His house. So this is his house. And down the road, there's another church, which is his house. And we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets and the cornerstone. This is key to knowing a Christian church, the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully, I love that word, we are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. And can I hear an amen? amen. God is on the move. We are members of a family, carefully joined together, an expression of Jesus and his love to this community. That's so unique to us as Hope Church in Varsity Lakes. Our community is what God has called us to. 
So we are called to gather together as a family. And every family, I don't know about yours, but my family, every family has different customs, different traditions, and practices that make them very unique. My family has some Japanese customs. So when we, oddly enough, because my wife is Japanese... And so when we go to visit family in Japan, there is a tradition. Do you know it? You've got to, and I won't do it here because it gets rather smelly. Okay, you take your shoes off before hopping into the house. Oh dear, I've just offended many people who don't like shoes in the house, right? But there's actually this area before you get into the house where you actually can take your shoes off. Let's pretend I've taken my shoes off, right? And then you can go and stand in the house. All right. But what if you've forgotten something, right? What if you've forgotten your keys or you've forgotten your wallet or even worse, your mobile phone because we can't exist without those? I have been caught in the past trying to alter the culture, okay? But not with my shoes. What I've done in the past is got down on my knees and started sort of doing this (laughs) across and then stepping back up. I got some looks, okay? I got some looks, particularly from my wife, who says I shouldn't do that. (laughs) It just takes so much time to take my shoes off, right? It's the culture of that place. It's the culture of that house. It's the culture of that family. Now, you take our family out of Japan and you come to my house and everybody's doing this. They want to take their shoes off, right? They want to take their shoes off. And we're going, no, 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 no. We don't do that here. Everybody does it. As they're walking into our house, they go, she's on or off? She's on or off? She's on. (laughs) She's on. Culture is different, isn't it? And just like families, culture is carried by its members of that particular home. And a church culture is exactly the same. It is carried by the members of God's house, this house, right? It's carried by us. And we have just heard it in Scripture that we're members of one family now, joined together in Christ built on the foundations of the apostles and the prophets as Jesus being the cornerstone. And so we need to actually look and say, what does culture look like at the time of the apostles? And it's actually not too far past Pentecost that we actually get this scripture, Acts 2, 42 to 47. So you can join me. Open up your, uh, your mobile phone if that's the thing that you do, or grab a hold of your Bibles, open that up. Acts 2, 42 to 47. And so Pentecost has come, and people have responded to the message. And there's thousands that are added to the church on that day. Thousands. And so very early on in Scripture, we actually get this sense of what God's house and its culture looks like. What does the family of the believers look like? It's almost like taking this wonderful family picture and displaying it for everyone. They didn't have selfies back then, okay? But we actually get this wonderful illustration. Here it is, this wonderful idea of what they look like. It says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who needed who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. And so this is a growing church. Isn't that remarkable? This is a church that's vibrant. This is a church of culture. This is a church that knows who they are to each other. They are family. You can hear it, can't you, in the Scripture, that they have this idea of culture already there. 
And so, so what's the culture of hope look like? So I'm glad you asked that question because it's actually based on this scripture. Here it is. At Hope, we promote unity and remain teachable. We live prayerful, expectant, and generous lives, growing our relationship with Jesus. We are hospitable people who love to worship God and love serving others. That's us. That's who we are already. I'm not asking you to become anything that you are not. This is a snapshot of that scripture and contextualized for us today. Is that okay? Is that okay? And so I want to just unpack this and, and say to you that first and foremost, our culture needs to be carried in our hearts. Our culture is a heart condition. A heart condition. I know some of us actually who are aging and maybe losing a little bit too much hair realize that our bodies start to sort of uh, have little interesting idiosyncrasies as we grow older. And often a heart condition is one of the first things that we are aware of asking our doctors about. Do I have a heart condition? And you can actually tell very quickly if you have a heart condition, they put you on this wonderful little monitor. Have you ever had one of those little dots all over you? You may be really young and you may have had that too. But heart condition is something that they can actually pick up very quickly. It's your heartbeat or your blood pressure or something that is going to affect your heart. And we need to start off by realising that culture is carried in the heart. So there is where God works first. Amen. And remember, when we're actually reading through Scripture, when this word heart or mind is used, they're obviously, in Hebrew, it's talking about the same thing. Not so obvious, I should say, to us, but very obvious to them. When they're talking about transforming your mind, it's also talking about how it needs to drop into our hearts, vice versa. If something is carried around in our hearts, then we articulate it. We think that our, our words come from our mind. But it's out of the heart the mouth speaks. Isn't that interesting? No, out of the mind the mouth speaks, surely. No, because in Hebrew it's the same thing, heart and mind. And that's what God wants to get a hold of today and continue to do the good work that Jesus started doing in your life. And guess what? It doesn't end. We need to renew our hearts. We need to make sure our hearts are in the best condition that they can possibly be. Amen? So if you've got some arrhythmia in your heart today as a culture, then you can actually come to God and say, here's this problem that I'm having with my heart right now. Help me, God. And indeed, he does this wonderful transplant. If it's really bad, he exchanges a heart that is clocked, clogged and clotted. And he gives us a heart of stone for a heart of flesh. It's Jesus' heart itself. And we get a sense of that. We get a sense of that in Scripture here. Here's this word devoted. Do you see it there? They devoted themselves. It's up on the screen. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the Word, God's Word. We need to devote ourselves in our hearts first. Devotion comes from the heart. The apostles' teaching to fellowship and the breaking of bread. Now, we'll be taking communion at the end of today's message. Just as a sign of what it means to worship God together. But I hope we promote unity and we remain teachable. All the believers were together and had everything in common. You get the whole idea of it being a heart matter. Every day they continue to meet in the temple courts. We don't neglect meeting together, coming together and worshipping God. And I love how it says that they do so with this glad and sincere, do you see the word there? Heart. Their hearts have become glad and sincere. I'm getting a real sense of the joy in the house each and every day. Are you getting a sense of that? 
Come on, is it only just me that gets a sense of that? And that re-energizes me each and every time I hear us worshipping in abandonment. As I hear that we're coming together and encouraging one another, I hear the joy of the Lord in the hearts of the people coming through that door and then sitting down in the seats and then worshipping God. And I hear it each and every Sunday and it's building and it's building and it's building. Hallelujah. God is on the move, and he moves first in our hearts. So it's so important to hand our hearts over to God. Hand our hearts over to God, remaining teachable and promoting unity. But there's some things that we have to watch out for. You know, with this heart condition, some things that the doctor will actually check for if he's got you on one or she's got you on one of those machines. And these are the things that we need to be aware of spiritually speaking. We need to watch out for pride, selfish ambition, uninterested. I'm uninterested in the things of God. I'm uninterested. Of, these are are signs that there's going to be a problem in the future. High blood pressure. A problem for your heart in the future. Disconnection. Oh, I don't need to go. Not every Sunday. I, I, don't, I don't need to go. I, I'll go once every month. That's enough for God. Well, maybe that you think is enough, but it's not enough for you. Because we need to continue to bring our hearts before the Lord each and every day. Not just Sundays. Each and every day. In prayer particularly. And in God's Word certainly. Because that transforming work of God happens through His Word. Can I hear an amen? We need to spend time renewing our mind. Allowing God to change all of those things that come and try to kill, steal and destroy the culture of God's Kingdom, your ambassadors for that kingdom. Second thing I want to encourage you in, not just considering your heart's condition, but actually culture needs to be seen. Culture should be seen. And so at Hope, we live prayerful, expectant and generous lives because the Church then and the church today devotes themselves to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and they had everything in common. They sold absolutely everything they had back then. <laughs> That's just generosity, right? And they gave to anyone who had need. Amazing. Handing themselves over and saying, oh, wow, there's a person over there in need. I'm just going to meet their need where they are. Isn't that remarkable? Isn't that a show of God already working in our hearts? So can I just tell you that unless God has got a hold of your heart first, this is not going to flow well. You're going to find yourself going, oh, I don't have time for prayer. And look at my bank balance. I don't have time to be generous. And boy... Ah, oh, you know, I've, I've seen or heard about some miracles, but I don't think that could happen for me. Let God get a hold of your heart. Let God get a hold of your heart first and then come with an expectation. Come to prayer with an expectation. Come at 9.30 every single Saturday. We're here praying. If you don't feel like praying, come and just soak yourself in everybody else's prayers. But don't just leave yourself there. Let it stir up into your life and let it just come out of your mouth. And may you be prayerful. You see that word? Prayerful. We live prayerful lives, not just prayer on one day, but prayer every single day. Not just around the dinner table, by the way. And that's great. Absolutely. That's fine. Family coming together, praying over the food, pray for each other, but continue to pray. Live prayerful lives. Continue to seek God after his will in your life. It's great talking to God all the time. I know that sort of sounds a bit weird. You're sitting on the bus ride or you're driving in the car. 
And all of a sudden, you start praying. <laughs> now, if you're in the bus, you might do that very quietly, right? But if you're in the car, you might start doing it very loud and proud. And just like the telephone calls that you can hear in other people's cars, you get that? You know, when you're pulling up and you hear, and you're going, oh, they've got their, <laughs> they've got their, that through their speakers. I can, and you can start discerning what's going on. Well, we can be the same. <laughs> Praying in the Spirit, pray in words that is understood. It doesn't matter. God wants to hear your prayers today. God wants to hear your prayers each and every day. If you aren't full of prayers, what are you full of? Oops. Fill yourself with prayer. Fill yourself with God. You don't have to make it look weird. And actually, conversation with God doesn't have to be this high and mighty language. I don't know why we all go King James-ish. O oh, thou God, art high above. And that's just a song I'm singing right now. All the earth. <laughs> Thou art exalted. <laughs> no, God actually wants to hear your own language, your own words. God, I love you. You are so important to me. Lord, I really don't know what's going on at work. Okay? It's crazy here. The people around me are weird. I'm not talking about my work, by the way. I work here. <laughs> or am I? <laughs> Lord, help me with these people. Or you're thinking about your family. Lord, I, I've really been fervently praying for him or her. Their salvation, Lord. I, I just want to see that in my lifetime. Lord, do you know what? At the end of prayer, this peace comes over us. That's why we pray. Because we don't go our way without. We get this peace. This reassurance, often I, I hear like God almost speaking to me, but it's not speaking. It's almost this reassurance, I've got this. I don't know why God speaks my language, but he does. He speaks my, I've got this. i got this. And, and he often says, my timing. My timing, not yours. Ooh, these are little things that we hear from God. I want us to be expectant. When we pray, I want us to be expectant. You know, God has not finished doing miracles. Oh, okay, I got one person here. God has not finished doing miracles. We believe in a miraculous God, a God who is bigger than our circumstance, our situation, a God that continues to do healings, a God that can break through in people's lives. I believe that God can and will heal people. Come on. Are you with me? And you've got to pray like that. You've got to pray with an expectation. And what builds up your faith? It's God who builds up your faith. When God moves, it builds us up. God's starting to move. I've already reminded you when you've agreed with me, you're seeing the joy of the Lord in our voices. You're seeing God move. That should build your faith up. And then with that faith, I'm going to pray for this person. I don't know how it's going to happen. It's not my prayer that will do it, Lord. It's actually you that will move. And when you move, miracles will happen. We've been singing that. Come on. We've been singing that. I'm going, well, they've already preached my message. <laughs> Isn't that God? He starts stirring us up in our worship. And do we actually believe it? Can we actually go out into our families, in our workplaces, around our friends and say, can I pray for you with an expectation to see that God will move? He will move. We live here at Hope prayerfully. We are people of prayer. We are a people that has an expectation that Jesus can and will break down the walls on people's oppression, depression, anxiety, all of those things that we hear as rife within the community. People are looking for an answer. Did you know? People are wanting to hear about the good news that you carry. You carry the good news each and every day. I was sitting down with a guy, not sitting, I was standing in front of him at Subway. The owner of Subway here in Varsity reminded me of something. You know what he reminded me of? My ministry. Isn't that awful? <laughs> As he's making my sandwich, my sub, okay, he's reminding me of my ministry. <laughs> God, he's <is> so amazing. <laughs> so how's your church doing? 
yeah, okay, I, he knows I'm a pastor here. Yeah, it's going really well. You guys must be doing really well at the moment. And I'm intrigued. Like, he's got more expectation than I did. I was worried about my sandwich. He's worried about my church. He's actually saying, wow, you must be really going gangbusters at the moment. And I'm going, why are you saying that? (laughs) Uh, Holy Spirit, are you speaking to me right now? He goes, I am on social media platforms all over the place. As an owner, I'm finding out there are many other business owners that are all Christians. They're coming out and sharing their faith at the moment. And did you know? He starts preaching to me. I'm going, too much onion. No, 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 no. I don't... You know, I took one for the team, right? I just let him do whatever he wanted to do with my sandwich while he's preaching to me. I'm going, God, you are speaking right now. He said, did you know that after a pandemic or a moment in time that has happened many times in the world's history, that people are hungry... They want actually to ask these big questions of themselves, not of other people. You know, often we think, oh, everybody's just pointing their finger at Christianity and saying, you guys are just lame. No, actually, they're leaning in at the moment. They're leaning in at the moment. And they want to know. And they, so it should be seen. And so he's reminding of my ministry. He's reminding me that I need to be expectant. He's reminding me that it will be noticed, and it is noticeable. So share your faith with others. It will be noticed. Make sure you don't just let it sit in your heart, but you let it overflow. Overflow. And so as we invite the band back and you're thinking, thank God. He's almost done. Ah, No, I'm halfway through. Okay, so as we invite the band back, We're reminded that culture has an effect. Culture has an effect. At Hope, we are growing our relationship with Jesus. We are hospitable people who love worshipping God and love serving others. We love worshipping God and we love serving others out of a growing relationship with Jesus. Just like I said right at the beginning, it's not just what we do, it's what we carry around in our hearts. Is that growing? Is your relationship with Jesus growing? How is that relationship? It's important to know that none of this, very important to know, it's not a to-do list. It's who we are in Christ. The potential for our hearts to be renewed each and every day as we spend time with him, growing, learning about him, more and more. And he is so generous towards us. He lavishes his love on us. And that love then allows us to respond to him. It's not that we are worshipping him and saying, God, give me, give me, give me. He already has poured out his whole self for us. Jesus on the cross gave everything. For the joy that was set before him, your lives, your salvation. He endured the cross, death. The shame of it. And here he is. This morning. Moving in this place. Reminding us of that relationship your first love is Jesus and as we receive that love from him we reflect on the cross wow what a moment in time and that 
that moment reverberates through eternity, through our lives, allowing us to come back to our Heavenly Father who loves us so much, so much that He sent His one and only Son to die on the cross. So in a moment, I'm going to get you to take communion with me. If you haven't got one of these, put up your hand and the ushers will come to you right now. If you've missed out, anybody that's missed out, just put your hand up and they'll bring it around. Now, you're probably familiar with this. There's several different layers. I think of this like the layers of our heart that needs to be pulled back. Some things need to be removed today. And we first expose the flesh. That's the bread. It is symbolic. It has meaning. It's, it's Christ's body. But it also has meaning as we're peeling it back. You, you're peeling back those layers. And sometimes our flesh gets in the way. We'll grab a hold of his flesh today. His heart today. And then as we peel back that second layer, you'll... you'll see the juice. The juice is a symbol of his blood. That wasn't just a little bit. It was everything. Indeed, when he was speared in the side, Jesus gave blood and then water. And the water just shows medically that there wasn't an ounce of blood left in him. He'd given everything. So in our hands, we hold the elements, the biscuit symbolizing his body that was broken for us. The juice which symbolizes his blood that washes away our sins. We're reminded of that today. And this at the moment is an act of worship. Because what we do is we reflect in this moment our fellowship, our relationship because of Jesus. We worship you, God. And we say thank you. Thank you for giving it all for us. Thank you for living, laying down your life for us. You are such a good, good father. And so, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread. So grab a hold of the biscuit. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is... This represents my body, which is offered as a sacrifice for each and every one of us. Each and every one of you, he said. Do this affectionately in worship as you remember me. Let's eat together. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, ratified and established in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in affectionate worship and remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are symbolically proclaiming the fact that the Lord has died but he will come again in victory. So let's drink together. We hope that you've enjoyed today's message. If you'd like to find out more information about Hope, go to hopechurchaustralia.com.